An unconventional unboxing. Let's get started. What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and in this video I am going to be unboxing and taking a closer look at a refurbished 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is the packaging isn't the conventional sleek look of a traditional brand new Apple product. It looks like it's just been shoved in a box and shipped out. It's not like it's a bad thing, it's still shipped well and is in immaculate condition. Now back to the machine. Everything is here, MagSafe 2 charging brick, documentation, which I don't think anybody ever reads, and the ever famous Apple stickers, as well as a microfiber cleaning cloth. Besides the packaging, the other huge difference is the pricing. This is the base dual core 2.5 gigahertz i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of SSD, uh, which retails for about $14.99 plus tax. On Apple's refurbished store, I grabbed this machine for $12.69 plus tax. That's a $230 difference, which is roughly 15% uh, savings. Not to mention the machine is covered by Apple's one year manufacturer warranty and is Apple Care eligible. That's the kicker for me as I know you could probably find this exact machine for a bit less elsewhere like Amazon for example, um, but you don't get the warranty or the option to extend the warranty if the machine has fallen outside that one year purchase date. With that I'll post a link to Apple's refurb store in the description of this video if you're interested. It's a good resource if you're in the market for a new Apple product and don't want to pay full retail price. As we take a closer look at the machine, you'll notice you weren't cheated in any way in the trackpad department. Even though the body of the MacBook Pro Retina is small, you're still provided with a full-size multi-touch trackpad. Taking a closer look at the 13-inch Retina, you'll immediately notice it's in brand new condition. On this side of the machine, you get noise-canceling microphone, headphone jack, one USB 3.0, two Thunderbolt ports, and the redesigned thinner MagSafe 2. On the opposite side of the Retina MacBook Pro, you get an additional USB 3.0 port, HDMI, and SD card inputs. Along the rear of the machine, the lid hinge, and the new exhaust vent. This has been an interesting addition as it has been engineered to be quieter and run cooler than the traditional MacBook Pro. Finishing out this closer look uh, with a quick peek at the bottom of the machine. Now I'm going to compare the Retina to a MacBook Air. You can see there's a significant difference between the two as the front of the MacBook Air is significantly thinner, but at the bat, at the rear of the MacBook Air, you can see they're about the same thickness, um, but the Air takes up more space on your lap. Looking at the screen resolution differences, you can't really tell or appreciate via YouTube video, but I can say that there is a significant difference here, and this is where the Retina sets itself apart. Now on to a different comparison. I'm just gonna quickly compare the size of the machine and screen resolution to a 15-inch MacBook Pro. This is a traditional MacBook Pro. The only difference between this MacBook Pro may be the screen resolution. This one has a little bit higher screen resolution and is running 1680 by 1050. That being said, the Retina display is 2560 by 1600. To put that into perspective, that's about 2 million more pixels than a, a screen running 1920 by 1080. And that's all packed into the 13 inch form factor. Now that we've unboxed this machine, I want to take a look at something before we do a performance overview of this machine. Uh, here you can see this machine has eight cycles on its battery. Normally a new machine has one to three cycles, so I mean this thing is fairly brand new. And with the performance overview, I'm not going to run into anything in depth. Um, I'm going to run through Geekbench, Novabench, Cinebench, and then I'm going to run through Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. As you've seen, the Retina gets a pretty healthy Geekbench score of 67.55. With that, you have to keep in mind that that was done in 32-bit mode in Geekbench. Now on to Cinebench. And in Cinebench, we're going to take a look at OpenGL first. I'm not suspecting that the 13-inch Retina will perform too well because it doesn't have dedicated graphics. And it is running strictly off Intel's HD 4000 graphics. And you will see that this thing gets around 20 or 21 frames per second. And that being said, the score that you do get is pretty impressive. And testing the CPU, you can see that this machine is indeed hyper-threaded. That being said, the dual core i5 in this thing sees four virtual cores. So the Ivy Bridge processor, the Intel Ivy Bridge processor, performs really well. Giving you a score in the range of two to three points. Rounding out my system overview testing with Novabench. 
As Novabench runs and completes its testing, you'll see the Retina MacBook Pro provides a solid score of 715. And finally, on to a storage performance overview. Using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, we're getting about 305 write and 450 read. That's pretty extraordinary and provides considerably higher performance than the traditional magnetic hard drive. This specific machine is utilizing a Samsung built solid state drive. To finish up my video, I'm going to talk about some pros and cons. The pros being very compact even compared to the MacBook Air. It's a performance driven machine that could be a viable workstation for some that aren't dependent on dedicated graphics. And the newly designed venting and cooling system keeps the machine extremely quiet even under intense use. Those of you that have a traditional MacBook Pro, you know what I'm talking about. Some of the cons, there's no dedicated graphics and that's a big deal for some. The second thing would be cost, brand new. Uh, at $14.99 for the base model, that's pretty high. Even the refurbished model is a pretty big chunk of change. And the biggest con for me would be upgradability. And finally, some of my thoughts. If you're in the market for a machine that has an amazingly awesome screen, not looking to do graphics intensive work, and need relatively high portability, this may be the machine for you. Overall, I'm very pleased with this purchase and I'm excited to get into the world of Retina laptops. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. If you have time, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. Also, feel free to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Google+. I hope you all are having a great day. Take care.